You're right. <laughs> All right, uh, it's Donnie again from Lincoln North Star. I would, but I had to charge you. <laughs> and welcome to the world of partially cryptic, cryptic number four. It is 3 a.m. again, and I wake in my bed. Much rather, I had never fallen asleep. Or rather, I had never even gotten into my bed at all. Or did I? Because I squirm and tumble and try to explain to him sitting in that incorporeal chair as dogged eyes strain across their sockets from the epiphany that in my dreams, or lack thereof, I can't experience or feel because they never arrive on their red carpets and blatant lies. Like I'm dragging on through the night drugs on some cocktail of sugar, caffeine, and regret, despair, and anxiety, and distress. 3.10 a.m., and it's only a glancing glaze, but he tells me that in essence, my dreams run away from me. They escape my cold, ragged, brazen grafts as a gas for air underneath the covers of my confines, but for what? And why they flee him and rude me? He, no, he leaves no assistance in the matter. 3.20 a.m., the night is only the sun fleeing from the moon's sight to exult in its bright facade, but the only light I see is the intoxicating blue of my screen coated across my eyes. I've been sitting in this bed for, for years at a half hour's pace, passing by in all but a fleeting moment. The devil's magic, sure, yeah, I am not Christian nor religious, but I remain Buddhist and faithful, a sacrilegious practice, I'm told. He who is supposed to aid me in my ailment only conquers taunts and contortions. The truth is only 3.33 a.m. and three lifetimes of worth of fear and superstition has warped my sense of time. This span of three minutes has allowed me to relive every mistake, every misfortune, every time I gaze up in a ceiling fan and die a different way. The cyclic rage at which I spin around the world, the world which I created, not to entrap, but to escape. At the tick at 3.34 a.m., but you know what it's, what? It's four, it's that damn four. It's that bad feng shui, four times the bad luck, and that's something that's ever so tucked in the depths of my mind. He knows it, yet I know it, but I refuse why my dreams and aspirations that elude me still. The analog lights up my face the way my computer screen floods my room in that euphoric blue once more. Tis only 4 a.m. for worse feng shui because it is not the devil's hour, but the fool's, the fool who lies in bed contemplating their value. He says I'm avoiding it. What a fool to think such things. He thinks I am the one who runs blasphemy because he's the devil itself or perhaps a bad oracle who thinks that four is an unlucky number. And the room, it spins and spins and spirals around my mind. Perhaps when I gaze into the bathroom mirror to a ragged, decrepit reflection and sit down upon that porcelain throne to check it as yet but 2 a.m., I had not yet gone to bed, but neither time nor space matters to this deranged prisoner. Why is it that the only thing you ever do is run? I tell the fool who lays in that incorporeal bed, insulting I about the life issues and refuses to acknowledge my knowledge. He who believes in feng shui and only perceives life through those crooked glasses and crooked smiling face and plastic confidence, and he has the nasty to call I the fool. I yell into the night that I'm going to sleep once and for all. And that's when I realize how much a hypocrite we are, confiding our problems into fake doctors. And so I exit the confines of my wasted, worn-out computer chair, displaced my legs from their shackles, and upon finding out the flashing light, allowing my eyes my dried solace, it is only but 10 a.m. It is but time to sleep. And then I wake up from that morning, not from a fever dream, but acceptance of my flawed self once more. So in that ragged deflection upon that piece of glass floor, I depart with a smiling glow. I remind him that we have another appointment tonight. And long after I leave, long after he had ever noticed I left, it's a pitiful reminder. Remember, I charge by the hour.